What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Sunday, September 10th, 2023, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 2.01 p.m. Eastern Time here in the United States, and we currently have several Russian doomsday planes in the air. They just took off from Moscow about three hours ago. And they're flying over central Siberia right now. I have no idea where they're going to go, but they're heading out to Siberia. So my guess is there's some bunker in Siberia that they're going to. And this is very concerning because we've seen in the past month all of these doomsday planes and nuclear warplanes here in the U.S. in the air basically every single day. And now we have two Russian doomsday planes heading out to Siberia. They're currently over uh, central Siberia, north of Omsk and Tumen. And uh, I'm going to monitor these flights and tell you guys where they end up landing, if I can end up seeing that. I might not, though. Uh, But we have a Tupolev Tu-214SR and an Ilyushin 96400 VPU, and specifically the uh, TU-214SR and the Ilyushin 96400 VPU are doomsday planes, okay? There's also an Ilyushin 96-300 in the air, but these two here, the ones you see in front of you on the screen, okay, these are the doomsday planes, the Ilyushin 400 VPU and the Tupolev 214 SR. Okay, let me just show you guys earlier what it looked like. You can see three of them in the air here. This was just about uh, 30 minutes ago. And uh, let me read to you a little bit about one of these planes. So the Ilyushin 96 400 VPU is nicknamed the Doomsday Plane. And it's being converted to serve as an airborne command post by the Russian Aerospace Forces as part of Project Zveno-3S, calling for two such aircraft to enter service to replace the current Ilyushin 80-based planes. Okay, so uh, this is coming from uh, Wikipedia. Okay, you can look it up for yourself if you don't believe me, if you want to fact check me. Uh, Here we have the uh, Tu-214SR, the Russian doomsday plane. This fixed-wing aircraft, a modified version of the Tupolev 214 airliner, has been developed specifically for the presidential executive office. A modified version of the Tu-214 is the Russian so-called doomsday plane outfitted with a state-of-the-art multi-intelligence payload It was designed to provide the Russian leadership with a mobile command and control center in case of a major cataclysm or a global war. Okay, now we also have some more footage coming out of China showing uh, tanks being moved to a port city close to Taiwan. Okay, so I'll show you guys some of that footage. We also have some breaking news coming from Romania. Romania is saying that they found the crash site of another Russian drone on their territory. We also have some breaking news coming from Britain. The British military says that they are now providing air support to grain shipments in the Black Sea. Okay, air escorts. They're literally escorting grain ships in the Black Sea uh, with fighter jets. Okay, so that is huge. And the chances for an escalation are very high in that situation. Uh, Here's another flight path of the Russian doomsday planes all taking off from Moscow. Um, Very, very concerning, guys. Okay, very concerning. And we have a nuclear war command and control plane here in the U.S. in the air right now uh, over Louisiana, a Boeing E-6B Mercury. These planes have the airborne launch control system, which means they can remotely launch all of our Minuteman 3 ICBMs that are based in silos in the Midwest. 
and uh, they can also communicate with our submerged nuclear armed submarines and bombers that are in the air and send out uh, launch codes, launch orders, emergency war orders, what they're called, but basically a launch order to launch missiles and also to uh, send out attack options to them as well. Uh, here we have another nuclear war command and control plane that was in the air overnight, and it was flying off the coast of Tampa uh, out in the Gulf and doing loops over there, uh, most likely communicating with a nuclear armed submarine somewhere in the Gulf. So uh, very interesting. Lots of nuclear war command and control planes in the air the past 12 hours or so. Here's a new video uh, showing some Chinese tanks rolling into a port city very close to Taiwan. Uh, this city is called uh, Fuzhou, F-U-Z-H-O-U. And you can just see dozens and dozens of these tanks. Look at that, guys. Absolutely crazy. Okay, so um, it's possible that China is gearing up for some kind of an attack on Taiwan. Uh, and if that happens, there's going to be total chaos uh, you know, they're obviously watching what's going on in Ukraine. They're seeing how the West responds. And, uh, you know, this is very concerning, all these tanks here. I mean, look at that. Look at all these tanks. Absolutely ridiculous. Here's another video showing some more tanks being moved in uh, Fuzhou City, okay, on flatbed trailers. So uh, they're definitely uh, gearing up for something. They're probably moving the forces there so that they can have them on standby. Should they decide to go after Taiwan, they can uh, quickly move their forces over the ocean. Um, so this is very, very concerning stuff, guys. OK, now, in addition to this, we have some news that the U.S. is preparing for an escalation uh, in the Asia Pacific region, and apparently they've moved two amphibious assault ships to Japan, the USS New Orleans, a San Antonio class amphibious transport dock, uh, and also the USS America, which is an America class amphibious assault ship also going to Japan, both of them going to Sasebo, Japan. Okay. So, uh, things are escalating guys. Now, I want to just read to you a little bit about this second drone that crashed uh, on Romanian territory. Um, so this is coming from Reuters. Romania finds new suspected Russian drone fragments on its territory. New fragments of a drone similar to those used by the Russian military were found on Romanian soil, the defense ministry said on Saturday, and President Klaus Ioannis said this indicated an unacceptable breach of Romania's airspace. Um, in a statement, Ioannis said he had informed NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg about the pieces of drone, the second to crash in Romanian territory this week, and that Stoltenberg reiterated the alliance's complete solidarity with Romania, which is BS, you know. Uh, yeah, it's all just words, you know. Yeah, they have Romania's back, but here we have two drones that landed in Romania, luckily, okay, thank God no civilians were killed. But what if civilians were killed? What if one of these drones landed in, a, in the center of a town right next to the Ukrainian border and killed a bunch of people? What would NATO do? Are they going to do anything at all? Uh, and, you know, if so, what's going to happen then? Is it going to escalate to World War III? So this is a very serious situation. I'm going to read to you some more details about this. The defense ministry said Romania's naval forces deployed search teams after local authorities alerted them to suspected drone fragments discovered two and a half kilometers southeast of the village of Ploru across the Danube from the Ukrainian port of Izmail. The military has secured the area and the fragments will be analyzed, it said in a statement. So two and a half kilometers southeast of uh, Ploru, Ploru is like right on the border of uh, Ukraine. It's right on the Danube River. So this drone flew uh, easily one to two miles into Romanian territory before it crashed.
okay, one to two miles. It didn't just fly in like 20 feet and then crash. It flew in over a mile. I'm going to read to you a little bit more here coming from the president of Romania. The identification today by the Romanian authorities on the territory of Romania near the border with Ukraine of new fragments of a drone similar to those used by the Russian army indicates that there has been an absolutely unacceptable violation of the sovereign airspace of Romania and allied state NATO with real risks to the security of Romanian citizens in the area. I strongly condemn this incident caused by the Russian attacks on the Ukrainian ports on the Danube. In this context today, I had a telephone conversation with the Secretary General of NATO, Jen Stoltenberg, during which I informed him about the new developments and he reaffirmed full solidarity with Romania and reassured that the North Atlantic Alliance and the Allies are fully with Romania as was proven, for example, by the recent decision of the USA to increase its presence in Romania with F-16 aircraft as part of the air police mission in our country. As I said before, within NATO, Romania is very well defended and benefits from the strongest security guarantees in our entire history. So uh, the U.S. moved F-16s to Romania now, additional F-16s. Um you know, that's pretty provocative, guys. Pretty provocative for Russia to send one of these drones uh, over a mile into Romanian territory and then crash it. Uh, I don't think that was an accident. I think they were testing uh, NATO's response. And, uh, you know, NATO is showing weakness as usual. Uh, yeah, they are deploying F 16s, but why don't they send some kind of small air defense system? You know, they know that. Uh, Russia's targeting those, uh, you know, port cities on the Danube. Why don't they have a small air defense system like Iris T or something? Um, so Britain is now escorting grain shipments. The UK has been sending Royal Air Force planes to protect Black Sea vessels carrying grain shipments from Ukraine. A Downing Street press release disclosed on September the 7th. The UK Defense Ministry began providing aviation security to Ukrainian ports following a wave of Russian attacks on grain infrastructure in July when Russia withdrew from the Black Sea Grain Initiative. We will use our intelligence, surveillance, and re reconnaissance to monitor Russian activity in the Black Sea, the press release said. As part of these surveillance operations, RAF aircraft are conducting flights over the area to deter Russia from carrying out illegal strikes against civilian vessels transporting grain. Okay, that is huge, guys. Okay, the UK is now escorting uh, grain shipments. Okay, that is huge. I mean, I'm going to read to you that one more time. As part of these surveillance operations, RAF aircraft are conducting flights over the area to deter Russia from carrying out illegal strikes against civilian vessels transporting grain. So, I mean, this just opens the door to escalation, okay? We have British jets escorting civilian grain shipments. I mean, it just takes one mistake. Uh, you know, if one of those British jets gets shot down, by Russia, I mean, it's on. The gloves are going to come off. Um, you know, so very, very serious, guys. This whole situation in Ukraine is continuing to escalate. And also in Asia, we also have a situation brewing in the Caucasus Mountains between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Azerbaijan is getting ready to move into Armenia and take back Nagorno Karabakh, which is um, basically a frozen. Uh, uh, country, I guess you could say. It has Russian troops there. Iran has moved their forces to the border of Azerbaijan, and they're threatening to uh, intervene. And Turkey is now threatening Iran and saying that if Iran intervenes, then Turkey is going to intervene as well and back up Azerbaijan. Okay. So uh, we could have a war between Turkey and Iran on a limited basis, potentially. Uh, so this is just absolutely crazy. Here's a picture showing uh, that Russian drone uh, detonating on Romanian territory. Okay, this is from the Ukrainian side looking towards 
the Romanian side of the Danube River. I mean, you can see this is just a massive, massive detonation here. Look at the size of that fireball compared to this boat out here, okay? And the trees look tiny compared to that fireball. So we're talking about a huge detonation there. Uh, we had a sub hunter plane doing uh, very heavy surveillance, reconnaissance, uh, and intelligence gathering outside of Kaliningrad earlier today and overnight. You can see all these loops here that this sub hunter was doing right outside of Kaliningrad near Poland. Okay. And this is a Russian uh, exclave. It's a small piece of Russian territory sandwiched between Lithuania and Poland. And Russia has their Baltic Sea fleet here. And look at all this activity here by this p8 poseidon just monitoring this area like crazy okay so uh very interesting uh ukraine's in main intelligence directorate is saying that russia has over 420,000 troops in ukraine right now uh the chairman of the u.s joint chiefs of staff general mark milley is saying that Ukraine has 30 to 45 days for an active offensive before weather starts to affect their ability to uh, conduct an offensive. So about a month to a month and a half, you know, mid-October. Uh, Kirillo Budinov, the head of uh, Ukraine's defense intelligence, says that the Ukrainian military will continue their counteroffensive even after winter begins. The Russian Federation has deployed 46 Iskander missile launchers along the border with Ukraine. That's coming from Ukraine's intelligence. 46 Iskander missiles, guys. Absolutely insane. And they just gave Belarus 12, okay? And uh, Belarus did undergo training with those Iskander missiles to use them to launch nuclear weapons, okay? Um the Russian embassy in Helsinki has advised Russians to refrain from traveling to Finland in cars with Russian license plates. That's uh, pretty interesting. And uh, BAE Systems, the British defense contractor, plans to produce spare parts for Ukrainian artillery pieces. Okay, let me just show you guys the latest situation here uh, in Ukraine along the front line. And here we have this pocket around Robotine, and uh, pretty much it hasn't changed a whole lot. It looks like the Russian forces have pushed back uh, right over here. Let me just show you guys. If we go back to yesterday and then we go to today, you can see that the Russian forces have pushed a little bit in this area, but uh, still Ukraine is uh, making huge gains in this area, creating a, a pretty serious pocket there. And they're also making huge gains near the Donetsk airport, which is uh, obviously huge because, uh, you know, the Donetsk airport uh, is a critical, a critical um, you know, piece of terrain. And uh, the Ukrainian forces have now established a foothold in part of the town of Opitne, okay, which is literally like two or three miles north of the Donetsk International Airport. Okay, so here we have the Ukrainian forces in blue, and they were able to enter Opitne, and they have a foothold there now, and they're, they're battling against the Russian forces here in Opitne. All right, but look how close the Donetsk International Airport is. That is absolutely a huge piece of terrain. If they can get that airport, that would be a very serious victory. And uh, Donetsk is not too far away from there. Um, so pretty impressive by the Ukrainians. And uh, the Russians are now covering their fighter jets with these uh, nets to protect them from Ukrainian drones because Ukraine has been sending drones all the way deep into um russian territory so they have erected these uh nets to cover the uh, jets and then here we have this uh antenna or uh, radio mast that was uh installed in melitopol melitopol is that critical city in southern ukraine 
that uh, the Ukrainians want to capture because if they do, they can split the land bridge. And looks like Russia erected some kind of a mast here. Uh, for what reasons, we don't know, but uh, potentially to uh, a, looks like an observation tower so they could see if Ukrainian forces are coming towards the city. They can climb up there and, and see you know how far away they are. Uh, maybe they can use this to broadcast some information to the residents that the Ukrainians are coming or whatever. Uh, but this is pretty serious that they would put this mast up. Uh, it means that the Russians are worried that, you know, Ukraine could be coming. So, um, you know, pretty serious stuff going on around the world. Make sure you guys are getting prepared. We have China moving tanks close to Taiwan in a port city. And we have China moving tanks to a port city near Taiwan. And we have another uh, Russian drone that was found in Romanian territory. And we currently have Russian doomsday planes heading out to Siberia. So stay tuned to my channel for continuing emergency updates. And the best way to do that is to make sure that you're subscribed and make sure you hit the bell notification. So every time I upload, you'll get notified. And that's pretty much it. Take care. God bless. And don't forget the three P's. Prepare, practice, and persevere.